From this moment onwards, you don't even have a minute to lose. What do you mean? You mean to say that I'm finished? A fog is gonna give her consent? Don't be scared about a fog giving her consent or not. Be scared about whether you'll get your complaints consents before it's time for you to leave. Oh man, then what the hell am I supposed to do now? You either threaten me with your comments or you just scare me to death! And I'm lying there like a dead man and there's nothing to hold on to this side either! I have been trying to help you all of your life, my dear Haji. But just like right now, whenever you didn't want my help, you'd come up with an excuse, and then you'd go your own way. Oh, for goodness sake, just tell me what I'm supposed to do. First there was Gudars, who I had done so much for, he gave me quite a tongue lashing, and then there's you right here, with more complaints up your sleeve by the minute! Man, it's time you settled the score right here! You're an angel here, you know every little detail about me, so then why- <laughs> How long do you plan on repeating the same mistake, Haji? To be honest, as far as I can remember, I've never done anyone any harm. Are you sure you can't remember? Or is it that you're scared of saying it? I honestly can't remember. Then look into my eyes.
What did you do to your mother and father to make them upset with you? Me? I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything? No. Then what are those behind you? Hey, where'd you go? Here's the moaning and groaning that's following you. I won't be pleased with you if you go against this. I won't. Where are you? I won't be pleased with you. Where are you? Help me. For God's sake, help me. Stop tormenting me like this. Vata, this torment is in your heart. A heart that's still alive and beating. I told you, you can't run away from it. I admit it. I admit I did wrong. I did my father wrong and went against his will. I'll compensate for it. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. For the love of God, just please help me. Stop tormenting me. Don't torment me so much. upset them so much. Did you do what they asked you to do in their will? Haji, didn't you yourself do to your parents exactly what your son's doing to you? Was it difficult, Haji? Damn the devil and his dark heart. Whatever was that? The curse of your father and mother, and everyone else that you've done wrong and failed to respect their rights. By the way, if you don't get their consent, what you've just experienced is absolutely nothing compared to what awaits you. Thank you very much for your kindness. This is the result of your own deeds. I hope you won't deny any of them. Come on, I made a mistake once upon a time. And now I'm stuck in this situation like a crippled mule in the mud? Why do you add fuel to the fire? I don't even know where I stand with you. Are you an angel of mercy or the angel of torture? What are you? The reason I'm here is to help you, Haji. And you've done a great job of helping me. We just saw what happened a few minutes ago. Do you know how many times I've offered a helping hand and you've rejected it? There's no time left for sulking and being stubborn now. Let me help you. If you really wanted to help, you wouldn't suddenly disappear like that. Didn't you notice how I was being tortured before? I was by your side. You could not see me. Because there were other things there for you to see. You had to see that if you continue escaping and denying this matter, and not use this opportunity to your own benefit, what kind of retribution you'd suffer? Not everyone gets a chance like this, Fata. Man, but I regretted it later, and I did whatever I could to compensate for my errors. All that worshipping and the prayers I said, all that charity and stuff didn't compensate for me being a fool? It didn't, Haji. Your problem is that you underestimate the importance of your parents' forgiveness. Their curse will be on you forever. And now you have to get them to forgive you. How am I supposed to do that, man? They've been dead for over 40 years! And you told me I can't do anything while I'm still alive! Don't tell me. You want to take me back to purgatory again? There's no other way. Oh. <laughs> that one time I went there was enough for an entire lifetime. For God's sake, if you really want to help me, why don't you intervene and ask for their forgiveness yourself? That's out of the question, Haji. I've told you over and over again that I can only act within my own jurisdiction. That's all. Well, thanks a lot then. So you plan on taking me to purgatory and not intervene and then leave me there all by myself? Come on, man. I still haven't been able to get Gordaz's consent. What if they don't forgive me? And you haven't helped me out one bit, so I'm not under any obligation, am I? 
There's nothing I can do regarding your father and mother. You've made this mess in your life yourself, and you're the one who has to put things right. As for Gudars, since it wasn't your fault, I might be able to do something for you. Are you serious? Can you really get his consent? So if you could ask for his forgiveness by yourself, why did you drag me all the way to Purgatory? I never said I'll go and ask for his forgiveness. Then what the hell do you want to do for me? I'm going to try to find a way for Gudars' wife to get her rights back so that he may agree to forgive you as well. But let me tell you this, Haji. Only one part of this is in my hands. The rest is up to your descendants and what they'll do for you. I don't understand at all. What exactly do you want to do? Let's go to Gudars' wife together. There are some things you have to see with your own eyes. Does Nargis work here? Yeah. Here and many other houses. Gudars has already told you. And that's Paris, Mataj's aunt. Huh. It's a small world, Haji. Nargis doesn't know that the lady of the house she works at is talking to her daughter-in-law at this very moment. Talking to Mataj? About you. They're talking about me? What finally happened? How long is the situation going to go on? I don't know, Pari dear. But the doctors say there's probably no hope. But his wife won't give them her consent to take him off the machine. <sighs> they should do it and let the old man rest in well, peace. Well, what can I say, Parry? It's his wife's life and Hadji's life. The poor woman keeps hoping that perhaps a miracle might happen. Oh, come on, come on. It was his time to go even in a different way. For goodness sake. By the way, what does Kosro say about all this? Kosro is worse than her. Do you think he's feeling fine and dandy? And from the time this talk of donating his father's heart and all started, he's become a total mess. This is a good opportunity. Try your best to persuade him. Yeah, come on, but what can I tell him? Should I tell him make your mother accept your father's death? Tell him to agree with his father's heart being donated to someone else? Just hold on a minute, Pari dear. Where to, Mahtab? Didn't you say you didn't have classes today? I'm going to the hospital, and after that I'll go pay grandmother a visit. The hospital? What for? Don't you know your grandfather isn't aware of anything? It's okay, Mom. I'll send grandmother your regards, too. Well, what if you go to your grandmother's house and that boy is over there? What will you do then? Mom, for the love of God, this isn't a good time to talk about this. Come back soon, okay? Okay, so now what? Ma'atab has got to see Nargis today. Ma'atab? Man, Matab doesn't even know Nargis. She doesn't know anything about all this. That's why I'm saying she has to see her. She's got to be informed. Maybe this grandchild of yours will be able to help you. In just a few minutes, Nargis will come out of Pari's house. Hmm. Okay, Pari dear, sorry about that. What was I saying? What can I say? You have to convince Mr. Kosro that by doing this, the old man will rest in peace, and his wife will get rewarded for her good deed. And she's into doing good deeds. That should convince her. That's impossible, Pari dear. It's not even easy to mention it. Yesterday at Haji's house, as soon as they started talking about it, his wife suddenly fainted. There's no way we can talk about it right now and then think about this. What if something happens to Miss Afog? Then what are we supposed to do? I honestly don't know what else to say. Mr. Afshin's coming back next month. I called to see exactly what your plans are. What should we finally do? Should we come, not come? We have to make the right decision for these two, right? Well, you could keep on dreaming. Over my dead body, God forbid. I mean, if I've been taken off the machines, that is. Oh no, I can't even talk about this to Kosro right now. Let a few days pass. As soon as Kosro is a bit calmer, then I'll talk to him. Very well, okay. Let me know then, dear. Just remember, Afshin doesn't have much time. Okay, dear, no problem. I'll definitely let you know. Thanks, love you, goodbye. I love you, dear. Shh. Why don't they disconnect the machine so he dies? Madam, dear, my work is finished. If there's nothing else to do, then I'll go. No, you can go now. Don't forget about next Thursday. I have guests. 
and take those few pieces for your kids to eat. Thank you very much, though. But my kids have never eaten such things. Thank you, though. Goodbye now. Oh, oh, look how workers are nowadays. Seriously now, what have we come here for? Pudgy, don't you want to stop rushing into things? at first, I couldn't believe it was really you. I mean, what are you doing here of all places to be? Actually, I came here to find work. I was going back when suddenly the bus started steaming and then it stopped moving completely. I had no idea what was going on. You mean, you mean you work somewhere around here? I have no other choice. Ever since my husband passed away, I've been the one shouldering all the responsibilities. God bless Gudarza's soul. He was a good friend. It's a pity he had to die so soon. God bless your father's soul, too. God bless all the deceased. By the way, did you solve that problem of yours? Oh, no. If it were solved, then I wouldn't have to drive my brother-in-law's pile of junk. God forbid you fall in the hands of a no-good person. That coward Sarmast not only slapped me unjustly, but also took my livelihood away from me. I say, why don't you go to Haj Sultani? They say he's a very good man. I went to him too, but he was the one to send me to Sarmast. He also made a promise to talk to Sarmast about me. But with all my bad luck, he suddenly had an accident and died. Died? Haji Sultani died? Didn't you know? No. I went to see him just a couple of days ago. They told me he wasn't in. Seems like he had an accident the day before yesterday. I heard the news yesterday. The most terrible thing happened. From what they say, he's brain dead. And there's practically no hope. But how can that be? That's how the world works, you know. You're here one minute, but five minutes later, they're sounding the death knell for you. Why did you want to see him? Well, I went to the factory to look for work. Sarmas had promised to get me a job at this new store that they're starting there. Oh, come on. Nargis, you're so naive. He's actually so mean and stingy. And then he'd do something to help you or me? You should have gone to Haji himself. But of course that wouldn't have mattered anymore. What's the use when Haji's not among us anymore? What kind of help and what store? So you don't know how to give your grandmother her pills if I'm not home, huh? Lie down, mother. Which part of your socks have you torn again? So, Maya, dear sweetie, I'm going out. But, Mommy, you just came back home. Where are you going again? 
Where is there to go? I'm going after my miseries, of course. So where did she go? She went to see Sarmast. Sarmast? Oh, come on! That old woman is not feeling well. Why in the world does she want to go to the hospital? Oh, no, my dear. No, with the condition Mother is in. It's not strange that she says these things. She's been doing that, you know. Uh, so, so tell me, what are you doing there? If something happens there, the hospital will inform us. Okay, okay. Very well. Uh, don't let Mother go to the hospital. No, no, no. I'll, I'll go there myself and see what's going on. Oh, Lord. Oh, goodbye to you. Hello. Hello. What is it that you're doing here? I've come to see how my grandmother's doing. Is there anything wrong? She says she's had a dream or something. She keeps asking to go to the hospital to see her grandfather. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. She won't listen to me, you know. Oh, no. See, my dear sweetie? Yes, dear? Call the taxi company for a cab to take me to the hospital, please. If you don't do this immediately, I won't be pleased please, with your you mother. At all. Listen to me. You're in no state to be going out at the moment. There's nothing Calm wrong down. with me. I want to go and see Haji now, dear. I think that something's happened to him, and you're all trying to keep it from me. I swear to God, nothing has happened. Manu Chir is at the hospital now. If anything had happened, he would have told me. My dear, I have to see Haji. I had a dream about him. He was right. calling me. Right. Believe Just me, come down he was to calling room. my Manu name. Manu Chir and I will take you there this afternoon. Someone Just there. Don't worry. You call a cab, sweetie. Call a cab for me but now. I beg of you. Well I beg now. of you. You might go there and feel even worse. God forbid. I swear to God, there's nothing wrong with me. If I see Haji, I'll feel much better. All right. All right. I know you aren't telling me the truth. Why should I lie, Mother? You know what? I'll take you myself. You said the same thing yesterday, but you didn't take me there. Something must have happened oh, to him. Mother, I promise you that nothing's happened to him. I know you're all lying to me. You're all lying to me now. I'll go to the hospital right now. As soon as I hear how he is, I promise I'll tell you how he's doing. Then I'll pick you up myself, okay? You keep lying Is to me. Is that acceptable for you, all right? Go on, go on, dear. Put her mind at ease, sweetie. And please call us quickly. Oh, my sweet, kind mother. You have such a sensitive heart. Why do you do this to yourself, my dearest? <laughs> I say, if Sarmas sees this poor lady, I'll bet he'll lie and make up some story to send her away. Achoo! Oh, good lord of patience. She sneezed right on time. I say... Oh, Allah, send blessings on Muhammad. I say, now that you're Muhammad. at it, couldn't you do something to make that sneeze go up Sarmas's nose? What for? So that it would distract him and he'd have an accident, that ruthless man. Of course I don't want him to die, you know. It'd be bad for me then. My daughter and grandchildren would be left unprovided for. But I want him to have an accident and end up in the hospital to teach him a lesson so he'd act decently and not take his good life for granted. What and when something happens to him is not up to me. That's in God's hands. How come Nargess's sneezing was in your hand then? That was done by God too. Since you had done the good deed of accepting the guardianship of that needy person who you've been paying an allowance to for the past three years, for the moment God has given me the power to do something so that Matab can notice Nargis and realize that Sarmast has tricked her. From then on, your only hope is your grandchild, Matab, and whether she'll be able to do something for Nargis to get back what is lawfully hers. Perhaps Gudars will forgive you and forget about everything. Now how in the world do you want to bring them together? I mean, Matab and Nargis. Please, be patient, Haji. You know who is always in a hurry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Hello, Mr. Javad. I've come to see if it's true that Haji has been in an accident. Yes, madam. He's been lying in a hospital bed now for the last couple of days. Whether he stays alive or not is in God's hands. What about Mr. Sarmast? Is he here so I can talk to him for a second? Sarmast? He just left before you came. Didn't you see his car? No. 
I didn't see him. When will he be back? Just wait a moment. Let me ask his secretary. I don't want you wasting your time here. Hello? Do you know when Mr. Sarmast is supposed to return? Thank you very much. She says he's gone to the hospital, and God only knows when he'll return. Do you want me to give you the directions to the hospital so you can go there? In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, about what are they asking one another? About the great news that over which they are in disagreement. No, they are going to know. Then no, they are going to know. What a good and wonderful I feeling I get in this room. Place, and the mountains as stakes. And we created you in pairs. It's because of the words of God that your granddaughter is reciting. It made your sleep a means for rest. And made the night as clothing. And made the day for livelihood. And constructed above you seven strong heavens. And made therein a burning lamp and sent down and sent down from the rain clouds pouring water that we may bring forth thereby grain and vegetation and gardens of entwined growth. Why did you just drop her bag? Be patient. Hello. Hello. Has something happened that you're here? No. I went to pay my grandmother a short visit, that's all. And? She's not feeling very well. What's happened? Why does she want to come here? If she comes and sees Grandfather like this... I don't know. She had this dream and wants to see Grandfather. Let's go in together. You know, she's like crazy about you and, uh... Actually, I did want to visit her myself. Okay. Oh, that's Nargis, you know. And they're leaving now, and they don't know each other. Come on, do something. You're being hasty again, Haji. Wait a minute. Why? I think I left my Quran there. I'm gonna quickly go back well, and get it. leave it for later. No, 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 wait here. And we aren't allowed to let anyone into the ICU except immediate family members. I really don't want to go into that room at all. I just want to see one of Haji's relatives for a few minutes. As I told you before, ma'am, you can't. I'm sorry, but I'll get in trouble. Sir, for the love of God, if you only knew where I'm coming from, I swear I've come a long distance. Just give me a few minutes. There! That lady is his granddaughter. Miss, 
Excuse me, miss. Yes, please. Miss, are you Mr. Hodge Sultani's granddaughter? Yes, what is it that you want? I'm so sorry. This is so embarrassing. I know you're extremely worried and you have every right to be. I just wanted to talk to you for a few moments, if that's okay with you. But I don't even know you. What do you want to talk to me about? I know. I've come here to talk to Mr. Sarmas. They have told me that he has not come here. Thank God you suddenly arrived. So I thought that maybe I could ask you to help me with my problem that I'm having. Do you work at my grandfather's factory? No, not me. But my husband, he used to. He lost his life six months ago when his truck turned over. May God bless his soul. Please tell me what I can do to help you. If you'd only give me a few minutes, I'll tell you everything. I don't know. I, I... I beg of you. I promise it won't take more than a few minutes. I have three fatherless children. For the love of God, please. Please, my dear. Just listen to her. Matub? Can you see me? Yes, okay. Let's go outside. We'll talk in the yard. This way, please. Yes, who's speaking? Mr. Sarmast. That's me. This is Hussein Kamyab. Do you remember me? I'm sorry, Mr. Kamyab. I, I don't recall. I'm Mr. Sultani's lawyer. Oh, yes, 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 Mr. Kamyab. Yes, I'm at your servers. I'm afraid I heard the bad news about Khaj Fatah. I'd like to inform his family about something regarding the special circumstance that has occurred lately. Excuse me, what is this about? I will tell you in person. You should know that I've also asked his son, Mr. Kosro, to come to my office for sure. And I will also like to ask you to attend this meeting as well, if you may. Of course, of, of course. When should I come? I'm sorry, but could you give me the address again, please? But of course, please write down the address. If it were just me, I would tolerate any kind of difficulty. But how in the world can I feed my three innocent children? Am I supposed to ask every Tom, Dick, and Harry I see for money like a beggar? The truth is now I'm just working as a maid in people's homes. You mean the factory still owes your husband? Do they owe you money as well? I don't know much about my late husband's finances, and I haven't come to claim anything from you either. About one or two weeks after my husband's death, Mr. Sarmas came and gave me 100,000 tomans to, according to him, cover some of our expenses. I mean, what could I have done with only 100,000 tomans? I told him to hire me at the factory. At least after all this, let me work there. Mr. Sarmas told me that for now they have too many workers as it is. Let the new store open and since I'm in charge of it, I'll fix you some kind of job there, he said. And now, with all that's happened to Haji, there's no telling when the store will open again. I swear I'll do any kind of job at the factory, even if it's just to be a janitor, I'll have no problem. Very well then, I am going to talk to Mr. Sarmast myself and see what I can do for you. Just please give me your address or something, so I will contact you. May God bless you. May God give you more and more grace. Hey, Saman. Do you want to drive? <sighs> Did you believe what she said? Why in the world would she lie? Why would she tell the truth? I mean the store and all, you know. And keep in mind that my father would never tell any stranger that he's in charge of everything Just there. Just a minute. Hello? Hello, Miss Mobini. This is Matab speaking. Thank you very much. No, there has been no change at all. Is Mr. Sarmas there? Uh-huh. Don't you know where he can be? No. Actually, I wanted to ask him some questions regarding Gudars Rahimi. Do you mean Gudars Rahimi, the truck driver? No. 
As far as I know, we don't owe him anything. Anyways, Mr. Haji even gave his family a check of one million to help them out. Yes, of course I'm sure. I handed the check to Mr. Sarmast myself. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, but there was even some talk about giving his family a monthly allowance. Can you just imagine that? You're right. But I don't know anything more about this. You have to ask Mr. Sarmat if you want to know. Not at all, dear. You're welcome, dear. Goodbye, then. See, I told you you shouldn't believe everything they tell you. But why in the world would she lie? I really have no idea why. I just know that she's affected the way you think. Hello, ma'am. Hello. I'm Sarmast. Mr. Kamiabet called me to see him. I have an appointment with him. Yes, one moment, please. Thank you. Mr. Kamyab, Mr. Sarmast has arrived. Yes, yes, certainly. Mr. Sarmast, it's so nice to see you. Do you remember me now? Yes, I do. I think it's been one or two years since I last saw you. Well, yes, sir. Usually I just had the honor of seeing Mr. Sultani. It's so sad that I have to see you under these circumstances. Unfortunately, this is very difficult for me to believe it. Well, what can I do? The world has always been like this. Please, come in. Well, well, Mr. Corso. Good to Hello, see Sir you. Hello, Sarmast. How are you? Have a seat, please. It's very nice having you here, Mr. Sarmast. As I told you before, and I've mentioned it to Mr. Cosro too, I was the one in charge of all of Mr. Sultani's legal matters. One part of it concerns legal negotiations and the sort, and the other part of it concerns what I've asked you to come here for. And since this part is about what will happen after Mr. Haji passes away, which unfortunately also seems to be the case right now. Are you referring to his will? Haj Fatah prepared the will a while ago, and I'm legally obliged to open it after his death, and only in the presence of his heirs. And that could only be done once his family members are in a, a better emotional state than they are right now. Then you must have father's will, am I right? Why, did you expect it to be elsewhere? No, well, well, of course not. But uh, to tell you the truth, we were looking for father's will. You see, we wanted to know whether father had left any instructions regarding the donation of organs after his death, so we know what his wishes were. Now, Mr. Kamyab, Unfortunately, I have no knowledge of this situation you are talking about. Oh, yes. I completely understand you, Mr. Kosro. Of course, if Mr. Haji had made a decision like this, then obviously it shouldn't have been mentioned in his will at all. And that is because the reading of his will is normally a few days after the burial ceremony. Well, yes, of course. We wanted it that way as well. But seriously, I had absolutely no idea Father had prepared a will. It's Matab. Matab? Mm hmm? What could have happened? Well, answer it. Maybe Mother's not feeling well. Yes, hello, Mr. Matab. What's up? Okay. Has something happened to Mr. Afag? What? What did she come to the hospital for? Okay, okay. Oh, goodbye for now. So there. He's not dead yet, and a bunch of good-for-nothing lazy bums are showing up. What's happened now? Some poor guy used to work for us once, a contract worker. And I was supposed to offer his wife a job at the factory. As soon as she found out this happened to Haji, she's gone to Miss Matab to take advantage of her kindness, making all kinds of stories just to get ahead somehow. Well, I'm the one who knows how Haji manages his finances. Haji never does it wrong. His calculations are always right. I know every detail about Haji's work. Now only God knows who's gonna show up tomorrow claiming their rights for this and that and God knows what else. Well, let's say Father owes some people money or they owe him. Either way, they should be mentioned in the will, am I right? And now the doctors have given up all hope of him recovering, so... Should we not read the will? 
regarding what has been written or not been written in Mr. Hajfata's will. And legally, I don't have any right to give any of the heirs any information of the contents of the will before it's unsealed in front of everyone. And unsealing the will can only be done if Haj Fatah has passed away. But father isn't... Oh yes, of course, I know. But legally, I have the responsibility of unsealing the will only after Haj Fatah passes away. And as you all know, Haj Fatah is not officially dead yet. better yet? No, man. What are you saying? He's brain dead. There's no cure. Jeez, I'm really sorry. But then again, one doesn't know what to tell the son-in-law when his rich father-in-law dies. Condolences or congratulations. For now, all I've received is his problems. Forget about now. You have to see what inheritance he's left you, that's all. Actually, th th that's exactly why I'm calling you right now. You rascal. So that's why you suddenly thought of Manochair. So what is it, my dear? I'm coming directly from Haj Sultani's lawyer's office. He said he'd left a will behind, but he also says that while Haj is still alive, he can't unsteal it, yeah? Is, is there is such a law? Well, he's right. What do you mean? Forget about him being right. Yeah, we have to hold on to the factory. Do you know how many contracts we have over here? What, what should we do with all of them? I, I, if things go on like this, well, if they go on for a few more days, the factory will close down. And since you're the number one lawyer in the country, well, I've called on you. So you can find the legal way that we might be able to read his will. Now, tell me, could you talk to his lawyer and convince him to read the will while Haji's still alive? To be honest, the legal way is what the lawyer has said. What did you say his name was? Well, I, I don't know. Jean Kabyab. He's such a bad-tempered man. You, you can't even talk to him. Nah. Kamyab? Are you sure? Yeah, I was uh, there at his office. Do you know him? Indeed I do. Yeah? Yeah, he doesn't even have a license to begin with. What's it? You're kidding me. No, really, I'm not. He lost his license and was disbarred two years ago because of illegal practices. And he got kicked out of the Bar Association, too. Hooray! Then there's no willy-billy to worry about, right? Yeah? <laughs> no. If the will was prepared when he still had his license, then it's legally valid. And the conditions are what I said before. But Hushan Kamyap doesn't have a license to practice now. Then that means that while Haji is alive, there's actually no way to unseal the will and read it, right? No, you're absolutely right. That's exactly the case. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hi, how are oh, you? Hello there. Uh, hello. What are you two doing here? So, you thought you could just make up some lie and get away with it, huh? Mahtab wants to talk to you about what we talked about on the phone before. God save us from all this girl sentimentality. Let's go into my office. We can't talk here. Mrs. Mobini, if anyone calls, don't put them through. But if we have any visitors, they should wait over here. I'm so happy to see that you two are together today. I swear I mean it, you know. Yeah, right. You're about to die of happiness right there. What I was saying is that I think it's really nice that you two are together. But I didn't know that I was here to be judged today. Please don't say it like that. I'm just a bit confused. I've come to- Nah, I was just kidding, my dear. Not to worry. While I'm sitting here, I won't let Haji be even one real in anyone's debt. I know you're worried about this, but believe me, I Would don't Would you look how self-righteously he's acting over there? What you am I going to do with you, Sarmast? say that grandfather gave you one million tomans, but she says she only got one hundred thousand. I don't understand. Because you think that everyone is honest like yourself and doesn't know how to lie. But a tongue doesn't have bones, my dear. It's just a piece of meat and it'll turn any which way oh, I you want it to. So you wouldn't embarrass mm -hmm. it so much with your lies. You mean to say... Yes, she's lying. You'd mean I'd say something without any reason? Actually, you've had a reason for every wrong you've done. Looky here. Oh, there it is. This is the receipt. Miss Nargis stamped the bottom of this with her very own fingers. Come this on, man. He's obviously lying. Poor girl is illiterate, let alone how she's been tricked. That 
We don't owe her anything for her husband's death, and we don't owe her anything at all. According to what Miss Mobini said, it seems she was receiving an allowance too. Nah, that's not true. Miss uh, Mobini is probably lying. Not true? Tell me, didn't I give her an allowance? Look how lying is like a piece of cake to him. And you just stand there and watch? Come on, man, sneeze. Do something to his goddamn throat. I don't have the permission to do everything. You can't do anything, but I certainly can. about Haji and doesn't know some other things. She doesn't know what me and Haji talked about, uh, does she? You she lying charlatan, you. Didn't I tell you to send her husband a thousand tomans a month, huh? Didn't I? Didn't I? Of course Haji wanted to help her. By giving her a monthly allowance since he was so kind. But I disagreed. Instead of giving her money, what can we do? We can offer her a job. Uh, instead of giving her fish, we can we can teach her how to fish. Instead of a fish, we will teach her how to fish. Uh, eh. oh. I thought maybe other workers would start having high expectations. But by doing this, no one will get hurt, and both God and his people will be pleased. Actually, she mentioned that you Stay were going calm, to hire her at the be new patient. Store. Because I felt sorry for her and her little three children. It's really sad. What could I have done? I don't understand. Then why on earth would she tell us such a big lie? Because she took advantage of your kindness. Everyone knows what happened to Haji now. It's a known fact. They come forward from each and every corner with their false claims to make... So tell me, what are you lies. planning to do about Just all so this? so they can, you know, they might get something out of all this. Just because of you being so sensitive and kind-hearted, you know. Don't be even a bit concerned about whether or not Haji is beholden to anyone. I know about your grandfather's finances. I won't let him be beholden to anyone in the world. No way. God forbid. And regarding this woman, she messed up her chance by, by trying to act cleverly. She lost her chance completely. Well, can't you help her in some way now? I never said I wouldn't, my dear. I keep my promises. But not now that she's gone around telling everyone a hundred lies and making up stories and, you know, Well, maybe she's in dire need of money. Very well, then. I'll see what I can do for her. Is there anything else? I'm very upset with her, you know. Very upset. But okay. Although I'm upset with her, I'll see what I can do for her. Anything else now? Well, thank God the problem is solved. We better leave now. Get up. Grandmother's worried, too. Yes, my dears. Get going. Your grandmother needs you more right now than for you to sit over here and Come check on, Haji's go ahead and do something. All your efforts are gone in vain. Don't be hasty, Haji. This is a test for Mahatab, too. What test are you talking about? He's ruined absolutely everything. To test whether or not she trusts people based on their appearances and what they say, just like you did. Mr. Sarmast. Yes? I really do hope that you're not upset with me, are you? Get going, dear. Of, of course I'm not upset. I'm just asking you to remember this. Don't believe everything you hear. Am I making myself clear now? Hmm? Okay. So, goodbye. With your permission. They've sent that girl to check on my finances. که بسست یکی نید مونده تو مشتم به جنون رسیده کارم بس که فرصت ها رو کشتم بازی نور و صدا نیست زندگی یه سر نوشته یکی پیدا یکی پنون مثل آدم و فرشته بین موندن و نموندن سهم شد ما اسیر انتخابیم خودمون خواستیم و این شد فاصله فقط یه لغز است فاصله فقط یه نور گاهی از رد به تو نزدیک گاهی از تو خیلی
Oh, let me go.